Republican New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, as well as Erskine Bowles, the head of the Deficit Commission, both say that neither the White House nor the congressional Republicans are effectively dealing with the budget crisis. Tonight, the Senate bipartisan deficit plan might be in the works, according to news reports. With us now are Senate Budget Committee members Ron Wyden, Democrat from Oregon, Rob Portman, Republican from Ohio. Gentlemen, thank you very much. New Senator Rob Portman, uh, congratulations, sir. Why not have a national economic growth goal? JFK did this many decades ago of 5 percent for several years to fill in the uh, 17, 18 million people people who are unemployed. And why not attach a high priority for tax reform, lower the rates, broaden the base? Can that be part of a package like this? It has to be. I mean, if you look at the numbers now, Larry, they are truly staggering. The president's budget proposal doubles the gross debt of the country in the next 10 years. We're looking at record deficits this year. Uh, the only way to get out of this problem is to restrain spending on the one hand, which has to be done, but also to grow the economy. And you know, you've talked about this before. I'm not sure if the government should set any goals because the government isn't very good at picking and choosing and setting goals, but the government should be doing everything it can to encourage growth. Economic growth will lead to job growth, will lead to more revenue, will lead to a more prosperous America. So tax reform is one of those ideas. It's obviously one where there's a lot of potential. I share Rob's view, Larry. Let's look, for example, at what's on offer now, and that's the idea of a corporate uh, tax reform. Lord knows we need that. I proposed, you mentioned uh, with Senator Gregg, cutting the corporate rate from 35 to 24. But what I want to do is go much further than that because, as you know, about 80 percent of the businesses in this country are sole proprietors proprietorships, their partnerships, and others. Let's not give them short shrift. Let's make sure that individuals and businesses benefit from the lower rates so that we can uh, generate the job growth that's needed. You look around the Western industrialized world, being up at the top of tax rates is an honor I want to see us get rid of. Well, I think it's a great, I think it's a great thought. You were out ahead of that, and I think people were shocked that Mr. Obama didn't have anything real in his budget about tax reform. But Senator Portman, let me come back to the spending side. You're a, a former OMB director. I want to ask you, discretionary spending, not the entitlements, put that aside for one second. Discretionary spending uh, in the Obama budget falls short of the uh, Erskine Bowles Deficit Commission by, I don't know, a trillion dollars or more. What can happen? Can you set targets like the old Graham Rudman bill or some kind of penalties if you don't meet reduced baselines? Is anything like that on on the table. Uh, I think it's necessary. And you remember the Graham Rudman days, uh, we actually made some progress in terms of getting the annually appropriated spending down, which uh, we talked about the discretionary spending. And, and Larry, everything's got to be on the table. Uh, the Pentagon's a big place. There's opportunities there to make it more efficient, being sure that we're protecting our men and women in uniform who get what they need when they're in the field. Uh, but we also need to look at more than just that 12% of the rest of the domestic discretionary spending that the president looked at. And then finally, of course, we got to deal with these growing entitlement programs. It's the biggest part of the budget, over 60 percent of the budget, and the fastest growing part of the budget. Now, people understand that it needs to be fair. We need to be sure we do it carefully. But if we don't do it, those programs are going to consume the entire federal budget or the programs themselves will become bankrupt. Larry, Rob is sure right about putting everything on the table on the spending side. For example, I think we're barely touching uh, the military. If you look at these overseas uh, uh, bases, if you're looking at some of the procurement uh, boondoggles, some of the fighter uh, uh, weapon systems, this is an area where we can generate more savings. I'm willing to go into these kinds of discussions with thoughtful people like Rob who've been at this for a long time and say everything's on the table. We've got to get a bipartisan agreement that's particularly zero on economic growth yes, and generating but, but more Senator, jobs. Yes, but Senator, I want to come back. Chris Christie, Republican, ripped everybody's head off yesterday at the American Enterprise Institute. What are you going to do about entitlements? Be blunt. Be honest. Is there any serious movement, bipartisan, partisan, White House, to go after entitlement reforms? There's easy stuff like extending the retirement age, for example. What about the entitlements? 
I'd certainly say that health care has got to be, be part of it. There are no domestic costs going up like that. You look, for example, at Medicare. The bulk of the Medicare budget is spent on a tiny fraction of the Medicare population. Those are folks who need chronic care. We've got enormous inefficiencies in the delivery of chronic care. So absolutely, entitlement programs, Medicare and others, have got to be part of the effort to contain costs. All right, Senator there, Portman, it, it, I give you the last it, word. I only got 25 seconds left. Are you optimistic? Optimistic or pessimistic? What can you tell investors? Is there going to be a new budget deal with teeth in it to get the deficit down? Well, I'm very disappointed in the president's budget submission this week because I think he had an opportunity to take a leadership role. But I'm encouraged by the response, frankly, from Democrats, Republicans alike, from editorial boards all around the country, which say we need to do more. Erskine Bowles, the Democrat co-chair of the Fiscal Commission, said this is nowhere near what we need to do. So I think there's beginning to be a consensus that we need to address all those issues we talked about, the annually appropriated spending, the entitlement programs, and then the pro-growth element. And we need to get busy on it now before it has an even greater impact on our economy and on jobs. All right. Thank you very much, Senator Rob Portman of thank Ohio, you. Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon. We appreciate it, folks. That's it for tonight's Cudlow Report. I'm Larry Cudlow. Thank you for watching.